Hello, thanks to everyone for joining uh, this meetup. Today we will be talking about contributing to Jenkins and specifically we'll talk about outreach programs like uh, Google Summer of Code. So um, the target audience for this meetup um, is uh, basically any uh, uh, who is interested in contributing to Jenkins, uh, contributing code to documentation, uh, helping with organizing events, etc., etc. And if you're a student, um, there is uh, Google Summer of Code starting soon, so we will talk specifically about that. Okay, uh, today we have three presenters. Uh, uh, my name is Alek Nashov. We also have, have uh, Mark Wade and uh, Shwe Lamba on the call. All of us uh, experienced the Google Summer of Code mentors. We've been organizing a lot of things and contributing to the Jenkins project uh, in various uh, capacity. And yeah, maybe we'll have other contributors who will join us today, let's see. But yeah, just in case we have somebody on the call, everyone is welcome to talk about their projects. So today we will do a brief introduction uh, about Jenkins, about the technical stack being used in the project and provide some guidelines uh, about contributing to the community. And then we'll talk uh, about Google Summer of Code. Uh, so if uh, this is your first time on a Jenkins online meetup, uh, so the main idea that it's basically a meetup organized by contributors and uh, we organize it uh, for users and for contributors. Uh, you're welcome to ask any kind of questions. We will be doing some live demos. Uh, we will be navigating the browser almost nonstop. So there is no goal to do a formal presentation and everyone is welcome to participate. So during the presentation, uh, feel free to ask questions using the Zoom Q&A. And after the presentation, we will have an open discussion. So basically we will stop the recording and we will grant everyone voice permissions so that uh, you can ask uh, questions. And after the meetup, we also have a GitHub chat uh, for newcomer contributors. We will talk about it later, but you're welcome to ask any questions today after the meetup. Okay, just a quick introduction to Jenkins. I assume that uh, the most uh, of the participants on this call know what uh, Jenkins is, but I will still do a really, really brief introduction. So Jenkins um, is an automation server and framework. It's widely used for any automation purposes. For example, you can basically automate everything here with Jenkins, launch your scripts there, uh, um, make building, testing, and delivery of uh, your projects. And uh, Jenkins is the most popular in continuous integration and continuous delivery area. It's actually one of the most popular uh, tools uh, and it's also open source. So you can contribute to the Jenkins itself, to um, its plugins. So we have more than 1700 plugins for different purposes. And we have a huge community. For example, uh, last year we had more than 5,000 contributors to the project. And yeah, this is a pretty big number. Okay, so how does Jenkins work? Uh, Jenkins is an extensible system. Personally, I call it framework. Um, it has plugins uh, which provide integration with different tools, which provide support for different control flows and uh, um, infrastructure. For example, you can connect your build machines, uh, which can be based on Linux, Windows, other systems. And for the most uh, of existing uh, build tools, uh, there are plugins and there is support for Jenkins. So yeah, you can automate pretty much everything with that. And when I say everything, it's not just about software. Uh, for example, uh, I started using Jenkins when I was doing uh, hardware development. Uh, there is a lot of people uh, using Jenkins for various kinds of automation, for example, accounting, uh, uh, smart systems at home, various kinds of automation. And yeah, if uh, you join a company, most likely there will be Jenkins somewhere being used for various kinds of automation. Okay. So what does a, a typical uh, Jenkins pipeline represent? Uh, basically, if you work with software, with hardware, or with any kind of build systems, you have source code uh, stored in software control management system. Uh, this uh, Jenkins checks out uh, this source code, then prepares the environment, runs the build, uh, does some analysis, for example, static analysis or verification uh, of your program, then it runs tests, publishes uh, reports, build artifacts, and sends notifications. In Jenkins, actually, uh, this flow is completely flexible. You can, uh, it has uh, general purpose uh, languages supported. It also has pipeline DSL based on Groovy, and you can implement uh, various flows. But yeah, this is just a common one. Now, later, Mark will show a quick demo how Jenkins looks 
looks like in reality, so I'll go forward. Okay, and yeah, uh, I always said that we had more than 5,000 contributors. Uh, there were also hundreds of plugin releases, uh, and uh, there is a lot of contributors uh, uh, coming from different companies uh, because Jenkins is widely used and provides all kinds of information. Uh, and uh, yeah, just to provide you some uh, reference for project size, um, Jenkins is a part of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Um, and uh, there is another friendly organization called uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And among uh, these two organizations, uh, Jenkins is the second biggest uh, project of Kubernetes. So yes, it's pretty big. Um, so if you're interested to find uh, Jenkins uh, online, uh, there are uh, two main uh, GitHub organizations. Uh, we use GitHub as a main uh, uh, social coding platform. So Jenkins CI is uh, the main uh, organization where we store Jenkins core libraries and the majority of plugins. Uh, so you can see that uh, there are just uh, 2,400 repositories there. So yeah, the project is pretty big. And another organization is Jenkins Infra. It's basically used for projects internal infrastructure because we need to build the Jenkins, test all the plugins, etc. We also have a website and a lot of other infrastructure components which we host on our own. And hence, uh, you have a pretty big infrastructure uh, component as well. And there are the um, GitHub organizations, but uh, these are two main ones. And for Jenkins, yeah, of course, we have various technologies inside. Uh, so the Jenkins core itself um, is based on uh, Java, uh, but we actually have a lot of front end uh, written in JavaScript. We also use a lot of Groovy. Um, and uh, yeah, even in the main repository, you can see that the distribution is like that. And don't trust these numbers because yeah, a lot of things uh, come from dependencies. So actually, uh, there is a lot of uh, JavaScript right now in the code. Um, then uh, we have Docker packaging, we also have uh, Kubernetes packaging, we have Helm charts, uh, we have uh, native installers, for example, for Windows, for operating systems. And uh, yeah, also, we have our website, which is located on Jenkins Infra. And uh, yeah, all uh, the website we have on uh, Jenkins.io is actually implemented as uh, uh, documentation as code. So the entire structure, and, uh, all the documentation we have on the website um, and the other components are basically written in either ASCII doc or Markdown. Um, and the engine of the site is uh, written in Ruby. So it's Avastruct and uh, some of our components. So these are just a few key technologies we have. And actually we have uh, a lot more in different areas and we can um, talk about it uh, later if you want um, to see in detail. But uh, in the case of Jenkins, uh, if you want to contribute, actually you can uh, find uh, technology specs for pretty much every component because Jenkins is either used uh, to automate builds for a particular technology stack or it has some components uh, written in there. So yeah, there is quite a lot of uh, technologies there and uh, yeah, whatever is your profile, you may find something interesting for you in the Jenkins ecosystem. So I did a quick introduction about what we have inside. Again, um, we will have a lot of time for q &A to address uh, particular questions. So don't not hesitate to ask them. If you want to see more details, so there is a presentation from me and Mark from 2019, I guess. It's about uh, contributing to Jenkins, and you can find a lot of materials there and specific examples and uh, uh, links uh, on uh, the pure technology basis. So you can uh, find it, uh, you can use it as a reference information to find uh, um, a way to start. Okay, I guess we could have a really quick demo. Or yes, that'd be great. First. Okay, let's do the demo first. So, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and just show some of the things that, that Jenkins automates for me. So what you see here is, is a Jenkins server that I maintain. And this Jenkins server for me is helping me do things that are interesting to me. And we encourage you to do the same. Find a way to use Jenkins in ways that benefit you. So in my case, I maintain Jenkins, a Jenkins plugin or two. And as part of that, I build it locally here and I like to see, oh, how does it look 
And so here's some work that I've got in progress. And I'm going to look at the, the Blue Ocean interface to see how this built most recently. And these kinds of images to show me, just like Oleg described, check out, build, and in this case, archive. And yes, here are my test results. They give me a hint what's happening in the, in the project. When a test fails, I can go investigate further to see in details what was the output like there. Jenkins, Jenkins is a great help for my specific needs because I can tune it to do what I need to do. And so when I have a, a question, a challenge, or a, a problem with software, I'll typically create a Jenkins job and use that Jenkins job to help me do that work. Um, if you're a student at the university, you might find a way to run a local Jenkins just long enough to do some, some initial study or some, some development time and let Jenkins watch your work, run your tests in the background, and show you the results. There are, there are plugins for Jenkins that allow you to see, for example, we use, we use Jenkins plugins that allow us to see static analysis output or to see the results of, of coverage analysis. So here I'm using an older plugin to help me see how is the coverage report for this particular plugin. Those kinds of hints help me in my development and Jenkins can help you in yours. You now, want to use on quick cover GPA. I, I am not yet. See, and shame on me. I, I have to Oleg Oleg notes that shame on me, I should be using the newer, the newer tools. Although I think I am using the newer tools, uh, for instance, in the pipeline here. When I look at this, the pipeline here with coverage, it I believe is showing, oh, uh, we could show ci.jenkins.io with the new tools. Yeah. So yeah, why I ask is because um, one of our projects in 2019 was devoted to creating new code coverage engine called Code Coverage API, which includes um, a quite complete internal uh, side, but also uh, provides a completely new front end uh, fully based on JavaScript. Um, and yeah, it was created by one of our Google Summer of Code students. So you can go to some reports if you. Well, and, and you make a good point that there are, there are quite, we've had amazing results from Google Summer of Code contributions, right? So for example, the, the checks API that was, was added last year during Google Summer of Code is now used by all of us on ci.jenkins.io thanks to that Google Summer of Code project. So it's, it's exciting to watch student projects be used. I just did some numbers yesterday and Last year's, last year's work by Rishab on the Git plugin has, has now been deployed at over 85,000 installations. When I was working on commercial software, I was proud to hit 1,000. And yet here, Rishab, as a student, his work is now in 85,000 installations worldwide. This is a great chance to contribute in a way that helps a bunch of people in, in very interesting ways. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So should we place it with how to contribute? To that? Yes, let's do. OK. So yeah, I'll share my screen again. Okay. Do you see it? OK. So if you want uh, to contribute to Jenkins, there is a lot of opportunities. Actually, yeah, you may have seen 2,400 components, uh, yeah, a huge community. And uh, yeah, you may ask how to get started because it might be hard to find something a country to, to contribute to. And in order to help you, we created uh, just a second. Yeah, we created um, an entry point on our website, jenkinservice/participate. And actually, it's an entry point for any kind of contribution. So if you want to get started, yeah, just go to this page. For example, if you want to write code, if you want. Uh, to help with visualizations, documentation, or do some design work. There are opportunities, um, and you can just click uh, here, and you can find uh, more description and documentation, which says how to find the repositories, uh, how to do basic contributions, including plugin development, Jenkins code, infrastructure. It also provides uh, links uh, to various issues. For example, 
Here you can find the newcomer friendly issues in Jenkins Jira uh, or in GitHub issues. So currently we use two types of issue trackers in the project. So you can see that uh, there are just 50 issues um, uh, on GitHub marked as good first issue, but uh, there are uh, several hundreds of issues um, on uh, uh, Jenkins Jira. So right now we should be around 200 because yeah, we had a lot of issues before the previous Hacktoberfest, but yeah, we still uh, plan to add more. So uh, these are starting points and the, basically the same information is available uh, for the types of contributions, for example. So Oleg, be before you exit from yep. there, we've got a question. Are you okay if I disrupt you with a question for right yeah, now? I think perfectly fine. the question is, oh, go ahead. The question is, Hello. is she there? No. Okay. So, so Oleg, the question is, I've got Java and Kubernetes skills. How can I contribute? Where do I start? So maybe you could take us on a tour here of some of the kinds of things that, okay. that would. Let's do. So yeah, obviously it's about code. Um, so for Java, basically the most of Jenkins ecosystem is written in Java. Jenkins core uh, uses Java, the most of plugins use Java. Um, we use uh, various technologies texts, um, and if you want to start contributing to Java, basically you just go to Jenkins CI, and pretty much every repository will have some Java code. Uh, so there is a lot of different uh, complex components, for example, inside the Jenkins core, like initialization graphs. We also have uh, our own uh, web framework at the moment. Um, and uh, there is also a lot of different plugins. So when you want to start with Java, we usually recommend to take a plugin because uh, it has significantly less code. Some plugins just include a few thousand uh, code lines. And uh, this is just a good starting point for you as a contributor. So um, well, I'm just looking at the list. So yeah, there are some plugins. You can just navigate uh, to any plugin and um, in plugins, you can usually find issues. So they're located either on GitHub issues or in Jenkins Jira. And uh, yeah, you can just, uh, for example, take a look at help wanted issues. It's one way the maintainer is looking for external contributions. Here, for example, support for skipping uh, status checks or whatever. And pretty much the same is available in many other components. Some of the components also have extensive contributing guidelines. So for example, for Jenkins, if you navigate here, it has its own contributing documentation just because Jenkins Core has a lot of specific tools, etc. And you can go through these guidelines in order to get started with your environment, the build project, uh, and run it locally. So this is a good entry point. Uh, for Kubernetes, uh, for Kubernetes, we have uh, multiple plugins uh, integrating with Kubernetes. So how to find it? You can uh, just go to plugins Jenkins IO. So if you're on the main site, it's just one click. So Jenkins IO, you click plugins, you get to the plugin site. And here you can just look for Kubernetes plugins. One of the ways is just to enter Kubernetes in the search line. And what do we get? We get 12 plugins, but actually there is a lot more related to Kubernetes because not all plugins have Kubernetes in the main. So if you search for Kubernetes plugins, then you get Oh, 10 plugins. I did something wrong. There are actually more. Anyway, uh, we have Kubernetes is best rapid provisioning of agents inside Kubernetes so that you can run on demand payloads. For example, if you need uh, Python, if you need uh, uh, specific tools, you can just uh, invoke uh, a task on a container providing these tools. Also, there is credentials for management, client AP, API, CLI, etc. So these plugins are heavily integrated with Kubernetes. And if you're experienced in both Java and Kubernetes, you can start from that. Also, we have a lot of uh, components uh, specifically for Kubernetes. For example, we have Helm charts, uh, which are currently um, a part of the Jenkins project. So it used to be official repository before it was what was the work for Helm 3. So now we have uh, Helm chart right inside the repository as well as we have Docker images, which are also used uh, for uh, deployments in Kubernetes. So you can find them here. So 
you can take one of these repositories um, and uh, try it out. Um, and yeah, Jenkins works quite fine with Kubernetes. And uh, last year, as a part of uh, Google season of docs, we also get some documentation about using Jenkins uh, in Kubernetes. So if you go to our documentation, there should be even a section now. Check mm -hmm. installing Jenkins, or like that's the that's the and first entry Jenkins, point for it. Kubernetes. Uh, yes. Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. And 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 this is is certainly a great place for people to get experience with Jenkins on Kubernetes and to help us as we further strengthen and enrich the documentation. And if you want to help with improving the documentation, uh, for example, working on better searchability, on better layouts, look and feel, uh, all of these kinds of contributions are also welcome. And if you want to write more documentation, because for example, you have um, main Kubernetes repository, you have Helm charts. You also have, for example, two operators. So basically, it's additional tools which allow to extend the Kubernetes API and the provision Jenkins instances quickly. So there are even two operators for that. You can take a look at one of them. And yeah, these operators are written fully in Go. Um, so you can, uh, if you're interested, you can just uh, take a look and contribute them. There is also contributing guidance, for example, in this project, uh, which explains how to get started and how to contribute. So if you're interested in Kubernetes ecosystem, uh, just start from here and you will find a lot of information. Okay. Now, we've got some additional questions. Oleg, are you okay if I keep if yeah. I keep bringing more questions? That's fine. So, so another question was, if I want to work on an issue, should I assign mm -hmm. it to myself? Or what's the recommended workflow to, and I assume what it's really inferring is mm -hmm. so that I don't trample on someone else or surprise mm -hmm. someone with work on something they had already started? Yeah, it's a common question. Uh, so actually, uh, there are uh, two approaches. So one approach is uh, for GitHub. For GitHub, you cannot assign an issue to yourself because you don't have permission in this repository normally. If you're not a maintainer or contributor who got uh, permissions to do that. So in this case, you cannot assign it to yourself, but you can just uh, send a message. For example, you can say, I'm uh, working on it. And uh, that's it. Uh, it will be some indication. And later, when you create a pull request, you can uh, reference uh, this issue and it will be automatically referenced. So it's uh, what you can do when you use GitHub issues. If you take uh, an issue in Jenkins Jira, so let's take a look. So in, in Jenkins Jira, the layout is quite different because we have one uh, Jira for um, a few southern components. So there you can see that, for example, you want to take an issue and work on that in the Jenkins code. So here, if you register it on Jenkins Jira, you can assign it to yourself. And this is what uh, we recommend to do. So for example, uh, yeah, there is an issue which I created uh, yesterday. So I'll assign it to myself because I wanted to do that. And I click start progress, and then I'm working on this issue. So basically it's fine. So depending on the task tracking system, the process is a bit different. So if I'm on Jira, it's log into Jira, and I assume I can, if I don't already have an account, I can go to accounts.jenkins.io to get myself an yeah. account, right. and then I assign it to myself right inside Jenkins Jira. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Okay. So then uh, there is a question. Is it a good idea to create plugins which run as Docker containers with uh, the directory mounted? So this is actually a good question because we had discussions about this mode uh, quite a lot. Uh, so it was called container API uh, plugin or something like that, which would allow such time of France. And if you're interested uh, in, in uh, this project, uh, let me know because it's something which would be definitely interested, interesting uh, for the community. Um, right now we have some plugins uh, utilizing Docker API so for example, yeah, uh, we have uh, plugins like Docker Commons, uh, which uh, provide API, which can provision containers. There is also, for example, Docker plugin, which provides agents uh, on demand, uh, which can use specific environment. Uh, you can have various Docker steps. You can uh, just uh, write a Docker with image in Docker pipeline. But if you want uh, a plugin which silently uses containers under the hood, 
And yeah, there are some plugins doing that, but there is no generic API for that. And if you're interested to work on that, yeah, it's a good idea. Um, and it definitely makes sense to have some such API. Okay. If some plugin uh, seems to be deprecated and not working, is it a good idea to create a new plugin uh, for the same problem state one? So for that question, uh, there are actually two ways. Uh, so if the plugin cannot be recovered uh, due to various reasons, uh, it's an option to create a new plugin. For example, we had Perforce plugin and now we have P4 plugin for Perforce. Uh, there were other such examples when uh, there were plugins uh, which basically provided the rewrite of the functionality. But uh, there is other ways. So if plugin is not maintained, isn't maintained, for example, we have some uh, plugins up for adoption. Uh, Okay. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Okay, I will uh, take one of my plugins, which is formal plugins, which is definitely up for adoption. So here you can see that uh, there is uh, play this plugin is up for adoption. If you see something like that, then you basically can use uh, our guidelines and just adopt the plugin instead of rewriting that. For example, fix the defects, etc., and get it working. Uh, if the plugin is depublished, we depublish some plugins because of security reasons, but the code is still available on uh, GitHub. For example, recently we depublished uh, the Team Foundation Server plugin uh, due to bundling uh, issues because some of the components uh, were violating uh, the open source uh, license requirements. So we had to depublish this plugin and we haven't fixed it yet. Uh, so it's an example of plugin which is not available in the update center, but as long as it's uh, within Jenkins organization, uh, you can adopt this plugin um, if you want to improve it or if you want to get it restored in the update center. So for TFS plugin, we already have contributors uh, who are working on uh, restoring that. Uh, but yeah, there are other plugins which have been published for a while. So, so and I like your comment on if a, if a plugin should I, should I create a new copy of it, fork it, or contribute to it directly? I'm assuming there the preference is to contribute to it directly and offer to adopt it the way you suggested, that yeah. if it's not being maintained, adopt it. Um, yeah, when it's not uh, maintained, uh, the only way to recover it is to adopt it. You have a process for that. So even if maintainers some response, we can transfer ownership in some conditions. And uh, if the plugin is active, uh, the recommendation is to fork it and then to submit a pull request. Um, and we, even if you want to adopt the plugin, maybe you want to start from forking it, uh, suggesting some pull request because they are also a good justification for actually adopting the plugin if something goes wrong. So usually in my case, I also work through forks, even if I have direct right access to many plugins. Uh, my recommendation would be to actually uh, push uh, your code to fork and then create pull requests because it keeps uh, uh, the main repository uh, basically clean uh, from work in progress activities and it will help other contributors. Well, and, and I like the fork work model, the, the working model with a fork because yeah, tidiness, like you said, it also help, allows me to see the see the results, discard them and not have, not have contaminated the, the primary repository with my failed experiments. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there is a question about setting up uh, Jenkins. Uh, so yeah, uh, I set up Jenkins in Ubuntu. I have a busy boxer which couldn't be able to solve. So if you shift the windows, you would create any problem in testing. Uh, so regarding that, uh, yeah, Jenkins support multiple platforms including Windows. For example, I'm currently a happy Windows user uh, and Jenkins works perfectly there, including uh, a Docker if you win in Windows in, if needed, including a Kubernetes mode if needed. So you can use Windows for development as well. Uh, for specific platforms, we have installation guidelines as well. Um, yeah, again, I'm not sure what happens with the BusyBox specifically, but uh, you can find uh, installation guidelines for different platforms uh, in documentation. And if it doesn't work, just let us know because we will be able to at least provide some feedback or fix guidelines or extend them if uh, something uh, is missing. Yeah, and like Oleg, I am a happy Windows user. 
I use Windows. I have Windows experience. It certainly does have differences compared to other operating systems, but most testing you'll find works just great on Windows. And yeah, you have to remember to set things like be sure your path is configured, be sure you have the right tools, the usual things. Okay, that's right. So we have something like 30 minutes left. I suggest to proceed. And if you have uh, more questions, please submit them using Kuni and uh, we will answer them as we go. Okay, so regarding contributing, as we discussed, there are multiple ways to start contributing, depending on technology, depending on um, uh, the goal, you can uh, use different approaches. And if you need any assistance, if you have any questions, we also have a channel specifically dedicated for newcomer contributors. So if you go here, there is a newcomer uh, guitar channel, which I already showed in the beginning. And uh, yeah, this is a uh, chat you can use for any kind of questions uh, when you start contributing. And we will be able to help you to find the proper channel if needed um, or to just uh, provide a quick answer there. Um, for any specific type of contribution, you can find the guidelines here. And if something is missing, please, again, please don't hesitate to ask because our documentation is also driven by the community. It doesn't mean that it's always perfect and uh, we will appreciate uh, any questions because we can uh, adjust documentation as we go or you could just submit a patch based on the conversation and it could be a totally valid contribution as well. And yeah, speaking of uh, contributions, uh, yeah, basically any pull request counts. So it's not just about code. Uh, Jenkins is a huge ecosystem. You have a lot of documentation as code. Uh, we also work on creating various uh, materials like blog posts, presentations. So there is also a lot of artwork, artwork and design to be done. So any kind of assistance to the project definitely helps. And uh, it's also not just about pull requests because if you help with organizing meetups, if you uh, help uh, with uh, just analyzing issues being submitted by users, providing some feedback, sharing your experiences, all of that uh, helps the Jenkins community and others. And we will appreciate any kind of help. So there are some uh, references. If you uh, you can just click there. If you look at the presentation link which we shared, and yeah, I will uh, go forward. So um, yeah, I guess that's it regarding contributions. So one thing I wanted uh, to say that basically size of the contribution doesn't matter. So if you just start with contributing, you can basically take a look at the documentation, uh, take a look. If you see any type, etc., you can just quickly fix that. So for example, here in the most of our documentation pages, we have improved this page button. You click that, and it basically just opens uh, the page on GitHub. So you can just submit uh, a small fix if you see a typo and whatever, and just do it in a few clicks uh, from the GitHub web interface. You just need an account. And pretty much the same for plugins. Uh, the most of plugin documentation is also located on GitHub. So you can uh, just go to plugin site and again, uh, there are documentation links, for example, here. So this plugin, uh, yeah, this plugin uses GitHub and uh, you can just go there and see all the documentation basically as a readme. Uh, we also use Wiki for some uh, projects, but we migrated the most of the plugins. And if a plugin is not migrated, actually helping with migrating documentation is also one of the ways to contribute. We have guidelines for that somewhere in the repositories. Okay. Uh, okay, so there is a question about CDF Slack space. So for CDF Slack space, just to provide a quick answer why it's a question. We have um, a Google Summer of Code, and this year we participate uh, in Google Summer of Code together with the Continuous Delivery Foundation of its umbrella. And uh, the guidelines recommend joining uh, CDF Slack uh, channel. So in Jenkins, we mostly use Gitter or RC for some channels. Um, but yeah, the Continuous Delivery Foundation uses Slack. And right now, there are problems with login. So if you experience any issues, please ping us in Gitter, and we will try to help you so that you can get access to Slack as well. 
Okay. So should we speak about uh, outreach programs? There is no questions left. I, th I think we've covered the questions. And so I think outreach programs is a good thing. Many of many of those who are attending are interested in Google Summer of Code or one of the other outreach programs. So this is a this is a great time to talk about them. Okay. So the Jenkins project is continuously looking for contributors. We participate in many mentorship programs, uh, including yeah, you can see that there is Jumbotron on the front page. So we have Shiko Africa contribute on uh, starting basically this week. Also, we have Google Summer of Code, and we have many other activities. For example, uh, we organize online hackathons periodically. We regularly participate in Hacktoberfest. Uh, we also have our own program, uh, which we can run uh, on a per case basis, LFX mentorship. So uh, as a project, we can organize our own uh, mentorship uh, programs, pay students to students. Uh, if there is an interesting project, uh, for example, if there are more uh, project applications that we can do through Google Summer of Code, if there are any other reasons, we can have the program on our own. But yeah, the key program uh, for us is, of course, Google Summer of Code. And uh, this is a good timing to talk about that because the deadline for applications uh, is on uh, April 13th, if I recall correctly. So there is still some time for applications. And uh, yeah, I, I want to do a quick summary of Google Summer of Code. Okay. So for Google Summer of Code, uh, Jenkins actually start participating in 2016. This is our fifth year in uh, Google Summer of Code. Um, this year we have uh, 10 project ideas addressing different projects. You can find all the information on uh, our website because uh, over the years we well, have I, invested. Yes. Sorry for the disruption. I think your mic may be a little soft. It, it is. So should I speak louder? There you go. Yes, that would be okay. great. I, at least I I was having a little bit of difficulty hearing. Maybe others are not. I'm I'm a little older than the rest of, than the most of the crowd here. So, okay. So yeah, Thanks. I will check the recording. Okay. So I'll just speak louder. So over the years, we have invested a lot of time uh, in documenting GSOC, providing guidelines to students, to mentors. So if you go to our website, you can find a lot of information there. Uh, so the main uh, page, of course, is project ideas because um, all students are expected to make their own proposal. And uh, to help with it, we provide project ideas based on several areas. So for example, this year we offer a quite diverse list of uh, project ideas. So just to go through the uh, automatic specification generator so that uh, you can uh, generate open API specifications for REST APIs, integration with the different external tools, for example, cloud events, um, also extending support for Git credentials, uh, providing um, uh, working on uh, the custom Jenkins distribution builder service. It's a, a follow up to the previous Google Summer of Code when we created a foundation service. Then, for example, providing security validator for Jenkins Kubernetes operator, uh, improving plugin installation manager tool, which is also a previous uh, Google Summer of Code project, uh, improving Jenkins remoting, it's a networking layer used in Jenkins, and the improvement for monitoring for this component. Also, uh, providing uh, support for Tekton pipelines in Jenkins, uh, again, improving uh, one of the existing plugins and also improving uh, step documentation, uh, working on new semantic versioning plugin. And these are just an example. Uh, so if you're interested in another project, for example, there was a question about uh, uh, writing plugins solely as uh, containers. Uh, so using plugins as containers, this would be a good idea for Google Summer for, of course as well. So if you're interested uh, in a project which is not listed here, it's still totally possible, so please reach out to us and we could uh, discuss this project idea and see whether we could uh, find mentors and whether we could host this project. So what else? If you're a student, uh, there is information available on our website, for example, application guidelines, expectation from students. Again, uh, Google already provides a great documentation uh, for uh, Jenkins users, so please, uh, not for Jenkins users, for participants, please use it as a starting documentation. 
But in the case of Jenkins, we also can say expand uh, some uh, practices. For example, we do regular online meetups. We invite students to present at special interest groups. Uh, we uh, help students with onboarding, with knowledge transfers. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of information here, which basically expands uh, the guidelines provided by Google. So take a look there. You can find a lot of information. And yeah. Again, uh, this year we participate under the umbrella of uh, Continuous Delivery Foundation. So if you go to the Summer with Code website, if you look for the Jenkins organization, this year you won't be able to find it. Uh, but um, instead, if you just enter Jenkins in the search uh, box, you actually can find two projects. One is the Continuous Delivery Foundation, where you have Jenkins, and another one is Free and Open Source Silicon Foundation, where you also have a few Jenkins related project ideas for this year. So for CD Foundation, yeah, you can just navigate links. Uh, you can uh, see basically the landing uh, for Continuous Delivery Foundation, which will also reference you for Jenkins uh, materials here. And uh, when you apply it, it's applied to the Continuous Delivery Foundation so that we can work with you as potential members and uh, we can select projects. Okay. So just to highlight a few things about the Google Summer of Code and Jenkins before we expand the information about project ideas. So yeah, again, our main goal is to provide the best possible experience for students and mentors. So we do not uh, target having as many project ideas as possible. Usually we target something like five uh, projects. So over the past two years, we actually had seven. Um, and yeah, the idea is to basically focus on projects which really make difference uh, for the Jenkins community. So it's either new features highly anticipated by users or architecture changes which are needed for uh, ensuring uh, Jenkins evolution in the future. And uh, there is also a lot of opportunities to do some domain specific things. For example, cloud native technologies, embedded hardware, we have uh, automation engineers and the community working in different areas. And if you want to integrate Jenkins with a particular technology, et cetera, or tool, we can uh, help. So it's one of our opportunities. And what we also practice is actually cross-organization projects. For example, for Tecton, Tecton is also a friendly project and the Continuous Delivery Foundation umbrella. Cloud Events is a part of CNCF. And uh, yeah, for such cross-organization projects, uh, we will likely be able to provide members from both communities which could be a great experience because yeah, actually you can uh, work not in one, but in two communities at once and you can explore more. And yeah, as I said, we provide a lot of investment in community bonding, knowledge transfers, helping students. Uh, we provide trainings for mentors so uh, that uh, they know how to operate because we also onboard uh, new members every year. And there is a lot of things like online demos, et cetera. And in previous years, when it was possible, we were also providing travel grants for successful projects. I'm not sure about this year, but in principle, it's also possible. And then just a shout out uh, to our, our students from the previous year. So last year we had seven projects and all seven of you were successful. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot to the students. And yeah, for example, two years ago, yeah, we were able to sponsor all students so that uh, they were able to visit our uh, Jenkins World Conference um, in, either in uh, Nice, I believe. Yeah, it was Nice and San Francisco. So, yeah. And you can find a lot of information on our GSOC website. So then uh, we have uh, some time. So I suggest that Mark and uh, Shirei could help talk about their yeah, experiences sure. and about uh, their project ideas. So, yep. Shere, would you like to talk uh, how, uh, how it was for you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so for us, like specifically me, I had uh, mentored in the machine learning plugin for Jenkins last year. And like the experience was quite unique because we were building the uh, plugin from scratch. So either with open source, you usually always have either you'll be building a project from scratch or a you know project idea so it could be like a jenkins plugin for that matter or you might be working on improving something so when it whenever it comes to you know uh, creating a new plugin from scratch you have a lot of time to sort of uh, sort of you know manipulate of how we want it to be structured so a lot of our uh, time during the community bonding period when we had started out was uh, you know like sort of seeing okay what all features should be there in the machine learning plugin because uh, Generally, machine learning tasks are sort of more uh, related to 
let's say research and not really related to deployment so the main task of the machine learning plugin was to sort of you know create build steps uh, jenkin build steps for each of the you know processing that takes place in in any kind of a machine learning uh, based uh, pipeline so for example it could be you know pre processing of the data it could be the training as well so all of that uh, involved uh, the jenkins plugin so we actually uh, sort of you know looked at okay which all particular uh, technologies within machine learning can be used like let's say tensor board or let's say the python notebooks that are used which all programming language can we support so we had support for uh, python then uh, r as well right so you can have such kind of things are happening so uh, like so overall the experience as a uh, mentor was really great because we got really amazing project ideas because we really wanted students to go there and you know uh, interact with the mentors and that is what i'll just give as my suggestion to everyone is uh, during this period from today till the end of 13th of april which is the last day do share your draft proposals because jenkins is very very you know active and the mentors are extremely active so you can get your proposals reviewed through emails if you're going through the mailing list and if anyone has any doubts you can always reach out on gitter or also on the uh, on the mailing lists as well so it's always good to get your project uh, ideas reviewed if you're having like a draft proposal because that helps in uh, you know receiving some valuable information or valuable points from the mentors who will be able to probably guide you if you know if there is something that is more uh, like uh, let's say if your proposal is a bit too generic and if you should add let's say code samples or you should be adding some kind of architectural diagrams in your project so uh, all of those valuable tips can you know you can receive to make your proposals better because ultimately uh, whatever uh, contributions that you make and the amount of interactions that you have with the mentors and uh, your overall uh, proposal that you submit like as the final proposal those are the main three driving points for getting selected for any kind of an organization and it's not just specific to jenkins but yeah like those are the three points so i i would say that you know like if you are interested in one of the projects for this year of uh, for jenkins uh, you can start looking at the projects uh, start contributing a little like you know start interacting with the mentors if you have any doubts reach out and you can start at least you know building a very small draft proposal that probably includes just the project idea what you think uh, you can implement what do you understand from the project and uh, so you know like just explain that and uh, pitch it to uh, the mentors and they can uh, probably guide you if uh, you are lacking somewhere or if you have any doubts with the proposal so yeah. she shivay i was i was interested in in your your comment that the machine learning experience was not sort of it was not a deployment kind of thing could you go back to that just a little bit so so tell us a little bit more about what it was like in in doing that exploration you were that was there was some learning that was happening during the community bonding phase some things that you had to explore further yeah yeah so uh, like as mentors and as uh, like the student who was selected logi was a student who was selected for the machine learning plugin so uh, like so like in the project idea that we had given we had explained that you know in any kind of a machine learning based uh, project that we do uh, usually uh, as compared to a standard software development project you have you know your builds uh, your cicd workflows that are very well optimized and like writing test cases for your uh, project it's very pretty much optimized for uh, if you're you know like creating like a java project or a, uh, let's say a mon stack based project but when it comes to like creating uh, projects in uh, machine learning specifically if you're using notebooks like the apache zeppelin notebook or the python notebook uh you cannot have that kind of a ci cd workflow for uh, you know for a machine learning based notebook if you have right but if you want to do that and if you want to let's say integrate that with a jenkins so that like each of those steps because a machine learning has different pipelines right so it starts from cleaning of the data then uh, doing pre processing then doing the model training model uh, deployment and then finding out the results so if you want all of those to get uh, you know derived as uh, let's say as uh, the jenkins build steps and how do you all actually want to display the results so that is something that we were doing a lot of you know research on as even as mentors that okay uh, which all different type of notebooks should we go ahead like should we only look at uh, the python notebooks can we also integrate uh, zeppelin as well like you know uh, which is from apache and then which all programming languages can we look at and uh, and we actually you know looked at two to three different uh, example machine learning based pipelines that we actually tried to integrate within the uh, plugin so that was uh, you know, like 
uh, that is where when uh, you are building a new plugin or it, it it can be like for any other project right so then you have to do a lot of uh, research and like you're more sort of open uh, to you know better ideas or try to implement even new things and that is what we also you know ask the students that if what whatever you feel uh, you know, like you uh, can probably include in this plugin and what you uh, like you know understand from uh, this plugin you can include that in your pr uh, proposal so those are the things that uh, were taken care of and were given a lot of importance thank you thanks yeah. oh like i see i see a question is it okay if we disrupt for one of the questions that's in yeah, the no. in the chat so um, or in the q and a is Jenkins looking for cloud platform integrations is the question. And now my thought immediately came to not only are we looking for cloud platform integrations, we're actively, actively desiring further cloud platform integrations. We've even got a very specific need right now that the Azure platform plugins need some adoption, right? So, and I suspect we've got it for others as well. So if you're interested in Azure or AWS or Google Cloud, there are plugins for each of those, and and you can see uh, ways to help the project. And yes, AWS is an as an excellent example. Mm -hmm. And the Azure plugins, a number of them, I believe, are if not already marked for adoption, coming up for adoption shortly. So yes, there are lots of things that we could we where we would be delighted to have people helping with with additional adoption. And yeah, uh, so for that, uh, yeah, there is a lot of plugins, and yeah, there is natural life cycle for plugins because yeah, maintainers uh, join the community, work on the uh, uh, plugins. Uh, as you probably know, in uh, the most of the companies, including Google, Microsoft, etc., the average uh, employment time of a single, uh, single engineer is around two years. And uh, actually, it means that the average uh, time of uh, maintaining it in the community is also close to this uh, date. Uh, of, yeah, there is uh, some uh, calculation for sure. And it means that uh, many plugins eventually uh, get available for, uh, become available for adoption. And we always um, invite uh, uh, individual and company contributors to step up and help with uh, maintenance. And especially if you use uh, these plugins for uh, your own uh, use cases and if you use plugins in your environments, if you see that plugin is up for adoption, if you want to fix something, uh, if you want to help uh, the community with maintenance, please uh, contact us and we will be happy to help because it basically helps everyone. There are many plugins which are used uh, by tens thousands of users and uh, which continuously need some uh, time to be invested, not that much time, but still uh, having connected maintainer is very helpful. Uh, for the plugin ecosystem. Yeah, and Oleg's Oleg's point about, well, I had the flawed perception early on in my journey into Jenkins that I somehow needed to be some sort of superhero to maintain a plugin that, oh, I was probably not good enough or my skills were inadequate or I would make some catastrophic mistake. And, and I've since learned that it's much, much more valuable to be a contributor and help in some way with a plugin than to sit back and feel like I was inadequate. So, so absolutely, there are many, many places where we can, where you can contribute, where you can add, add some little bit and discover your own interests and grow and develop your interests and help Jenkins with its maintenance of plugins and core code. Yeah, and also it's a good opportunity to try out new technologies. Because even if you say maintenance, actually the most uh, many plugins use quite uh, new technology stacks. So there are some plugins uh, already using Quarkus, for example, as a framework. Uh, there is a lot of adoption for different, different common libraries. Uh, there is a lot of modern plugins, including, for example, code coverage, API, warnings NG, which use quite uh, uh, new Java technologies. Uh, they are based on React. Uh, they include a lot of st standard libraries. So, if you want to learn new technology stack, Jenkins could be a good opportunity. And even if you talk about uh, this uh, plugin website, actually, it's also a project hosted by Jenkins. Uh, this project is also based on JavaScript, uh, React, and Gatsby as a framework. Uh, so if you're interested, you can also contribute to that. And actually, it got improved a lot over the past two years. 
and there is still a lot of opportunities here and there, for example, uh, improving layouts, uh, doing more integrations, for example, for visualizing GitHub issues or uh, visualizing uh, releases from changelog XMD, which is not supported at the moment. So also it's a good opportunity, opportunity to contribute and you don't have to be expert in this technology at all. Yeah, I love your highlighting of the plugin site, and it is. This is this is maintain. One person does most of the maintenance on it, and that one person does JavaScript, right? And that that is it's an impressive result that Gavin has been able to do with his his work on the plugin site. If you're interested in JavaScript, that plugin site is an amazing place to contribute. He recently integrated an entirely different search engine is uh, significant improvements. And yet Gavin, I'm sure still feels like he would love to have additional help and more people to assist. If you'd love, like to have some experience working with a production scale, production sized data, data driven site. This is, this is a really beautiful piece of work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is also a question about Jenkins X. So what is Jenkins X and how, uh, whether it's maintained by the same team. So for that, um, the question, the answer is that Jenkins X has started as a part of Jenkins. So it was a sub project uh, which existed here, but uh, when uh, over years it evolved uh, into a separate project. So currently it's a separate project also under the umbrella of the Continuous Delivery Foundation. So if you go here, you can see that uh, basically Jenkins and Jenkins X are on the same level. Jenkins is a graduated project. Uh, Jenkins X is incubating project. Uh, but um, in the community, we still have a lot of communications with Jenkins X. There are multiple reasons for that. Firstly, Jenkins X uh, uses Jenkins as one of uh, the build engines. Uh, currently, that is Jenkins X3 preparing for the release with uh, more uh, deeper support for Jenkins. And there is also um, a lot of opportunities to, for communities to communicate because it's a really friendly relationship uh, for us. We share some contributor summits. We also meet at various uh, continuous delivery foundation uh, SIG meetings. So basically, Jenkins X, just to answer the question specifically, no, it's not maintained by the same team. It's not even maintained by the same organization. Uh, but uh, they, there is still quite good relations between the projects and there is a lot of opportunities for sharing experiences and uh, reusing components. Okay. Now so we've got, is, oh, yeah. we, we have one more question, a, a question on from asking, hey, we don't have any machine learning plugin projects this year for Google Summer of Code. Could, would that be acceptable if someone were to propose, send it, submit a project proposal for a machine learning exercise this year? Um, Oleg or, or Shive, do you want to comment to that? I definitely can. So um, what we post here are the project ideas, how we collect them. Uh, basically we invite uh, potential mentors uh, to submit their proposals and uh, that's how we collect the list of project ideas. So for these uh, ideas, we have a list of potential mentors who are interested to, to mentor a project in some conditions, but it doesn't mean that we wouldn't be able to accept other projects Though in this case, uh, there is a recommendation to reach out to the community earlier because a JSOC project may happen only if there are mentors for that project. And as org admins, we need some time to find potential mentors uh, and uh, to establish a contact between the mentor and the students so that uh, we can actually make the project happen. So if you have original project idea, anything related to Jenkins is totally welcome. We definitely put some preference and we help original project ideas. Uh, at the same time, yes, we need some time so that we can actually help this project uh, to happen. Um, and JSOC yeah. has a pretty limited time frame. So if you have an idea, it's basically better to reach out to us today or tomorrow so that we could help. At the same time, uh, yeah. We are not limited by just Google Summer of Code. We have opportunity to run other outreach programs. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, basically, as a contributor, you can join us 
at any moment, you can just send a message to the developer mailing list, uh, make your proposal, and yeah, there will be people who would be interested to mentor you. Yeah, there are this other questions like stipends, etc. But yeah, mentoring is possible. Yeah, because like open source is, you know, throughout the year, it's every day. Like if you're still interested, like even though let's say, uh, if you have some kind of a project idea that is related to machine learning or any other topic, and if it's not selected for GSOC, you can still, you know, actually take up that project and the community members will always be there to, you know, if they like the idea, if there's some kind of refinements and if they want to take it up, uh, like open source is always uh, active. So you don't need to wait for a particular program to actually get started with that. I, I, I have to re, re, reinforce Oleg's observation that we're interested in any project ideas. The, the crucial thing is we can't successfully do one without mentors. And so early discussion is very healthy. And yeah. that early discussion will then help us decide, can we, can we provide mentors for that idea? Can we provide mm -hmm. mentors for that concept? So absolutely, if, if you're interested in machine learning, uh, begin the discussions on it. At this point, the things that you see in our pro draft project ideas are things that we as, as known mentors were interested in and, and happy to discuss them further. That's right. But yeah, for machine learning, uh, I could potentially be a mentor this year. Maybe we would be interested to be a mentor. Uh, I'm sure, uh, or maybe yes. Olaf has a project in TensorFlow. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah, depends. So you can uh, find uh, contributors for sure. Because what I feel is that uh, with Jenkins, like the uh, interaction with machine learning is still pretty much limited. I think it was the first time that there was a, a step taken towards uh, that. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if someone has an idea, feel free to reach out. Uh, if you have some ideas to you know, make the current ML plugin uh, better, uh, or like if you have some other idea. Okay. And there was actually a question about how to propose a new project. Can we directly share it on a mailing list or on Gitter? Yes, and it's actually the recommended approach. So in the Jenkins uh, project, uh, we highly recommend uh, students to discuss uh, their project proposals publicly because it helps uh, to get more feedback and uh, it helps us to find mentors and to have a live discussion. So for example, there are two channels. If you go uh, to any project, let's go to, okay, let's switch to 2029. So here, for example, if you talk about Cloud Events plugin for Jenkins, here you can see that there are references. So for example, this project ID is under the umbrella of Cloud Native Special Interest Group in Jenkins. And there are channels which are specifically re related to this uh, Special Interest Group. I wouldn't say that it's very active now, but uh, it meets every week. And for example, here you can find the chat. You can just uh, drop your proposal here. There is also a mailing list, uh, which also works. And for example, here is a proposal submitted by one of the students uh, under review at the moment. Um, and uh, yeah, you can uh, do the same for um, other project ideas. If you cannot find a, a specific chat, uh, then uh, there are also foundation channels. So, for example, here we have special uh, Gitter chat for Jenkins participants and also special meeting list. So this could be uh, two channels you could use for a generic proposal. And then again, if you ask today, we will be able to point you to particular mentors or channels when uh, it's uh, relevant. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is another question uh, by Innocent. It's, is it possible that all proposed projects for this year has already been taken? And if that is the case, how would interested students who have not gotten project idea get into GSOC? Okay. So Google Summer of Code is a competitive program. What it means that uh, usually we get much more applications than we can accept. Uh, for some project uh, ideas, we get multiple proposals. Firstly, it doesn't uh, block you from applying. We do not make any assignments until uh, the application phase is over. 
yeah, uh, of course, uh, there might be students who were working on this uh, project idea for several months and who already made application, etc. Then, yeah, it uh, might be quite a challenge to provide, uh, to make a proposal of a similar quality if you are just starting. Uh, but uh, yeah, it basically depends on the uh, project idea and uh, on the area. So if you're interested in some area, uh, you can uh, make a proposal. And even if uh, there is a student and if you don't want to compete, you can propose a project idea, which is uh, again, uh, uh, along the lines of what we published, but which doesn't uh, collide with other proposals. It's also an option sometimes. So for example, here we talk about Git credentials binding and probably you would work on Perforce credentials binding and uh, there is no integration, why not? Well, for example, here's a project cloud events. Instead of cloud events, you could uh, propose integration with AFIL. It's another events framework, which is also open source. Uh, such uh, proposals could also happen. Again, better to make it earlier so that we can find mentors, uh, but yeah, there is uh, no such situation that uh, all project uh, slots are taken because right now we do not even know what are the project, uh, what is the number of project slots we are going to apply to. It really depends on the applications. Okay. So if there is no questions, just a few closing words and then we can uh, switch to the offline mode. Uh, or actually we didn't talk uh, about- uh, Those, those things. I think, Oleg, it's perfectly fine if we skip over those because I, I think we've got lots of good interest and we could always discuss them during the, the open, open question session. We don't need to take okay. the time on those. So yeah, then uh, yeah, if you're interested about specific uh, project ideas or if you have more questions, please stay online. We will stop the recording, but uh, after that we will just grant everyone uh, voice permissions so that uh, you can ask questions directly without uh, using Q&A. And yeah, you can also have some slides with entries here, but yeah, you can find more information on the project idea pages and all our project ideas pages have uh, links to quick. Uh, to newcomer friendly issues. They also have quick start guidelines. So if you want to get started, uh, this information should help you because yeah, we expect every published project to have this information. And yeah, one frequently asked question. So we have uh, accepted ideas and we have draft project ideas. So what, what draft means is that uh, this project idea doesn't fully meet uh, the requirements. For example, it might be missing a section or whatever, but it's a for project idea. You still can create proposal for these project ideas. It might just require some research uh, or discussion with mentors, but you're totally welcome to make proposals for these ideas as well. And basically for any other Jenkins related idea, which is not even listed here. Okay, that's it uh, from me. And thanks a lot uh, for participating in this meetup. We'll stop the recording. If you have any questions after the meetup, please uh, use um, uh, our Gitter channels. So again, uh, if you just want to contribute uh, to Jenkins, not really to Google Summer of Code, then uh, there is a newcomer contributors channel. Uh, and there is GSOC, a special interest group uh, for specifically for Google Summer of Code. So these are two main interest points uh, which you can uh, use. Okay. Then I'll stop the recording and again, thanks everyone.